Man, you gotta love it. No <laughs> doubt. Also in 88, Marley Marl drops In Control Volume 1. Are you part of this? No, but yeah. Okay, let us know. Right. We now, want the facts. This is the tricky one. This is the tricky one. So I get a call from Heavy D. Heavy D wants to do a record with Biz, right? Now, if you know anything about Biz, Biz don't do records with nobody at that time. Kane is it. We only got one record with Kane, and he's doing records with Swan. Biz, you know, Shantae, yeah, Juice Crew. You know what I'm saying? So he got a record with Shantae. I'm talking about outside of us, Biz not doing no records with nobody. Think about it, right? right? So Heavy calls me. Say, yo, B, I'm going to do it. I said, all right, you, you, what, you, what, what you thinking about? And he was like, no, I want to do a record. Like, yo, I want to do a record like y'all be doing, man, in biz style. So he talking to me. So we talking on the phone. I said, yo, yeah, we could do it like this. He said, yeah, so, you know, I just want to do I'm going I'm to do it just like biz do it. I said, okay, bet. I said, look, now we on the phone for about an hour, maybe more than an hour. Might be because we, we just build it on the phone. So now, you know, this is house phone days. We got a cell phone, but this shit costs like a dollar <laughs> fifty a minute. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? So Biz comes home. I said, Biz, yo, call head. He said, Why? I said, yo, head wanna do a record with you. He said, Okay, he ain't talking to enthused. I said, No, you don't understand. He wanna do a record with you, your way. Like he gonna be rhyming with you like you. He said, Word. So now him and Heb talks. So they talking. Now, in between that time, Biz had got a record from Positive K. Uh, the, the beat, the Joe Tech, the doom, tat, the doom, doom, tat. Blah, 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 blah. So now we up, like I'm asleep when he gets the record. He come from a party. So he loved this beat. He loved this. Yo! So now that, I'm not putting nothing together. During the week, I'm still working at the time. So I go to work. It was like 87. So I go, to, it was 87? Hold up. I might not have been working right then. I might have been doing something to get some money right then. Right. right? <laughs> I got to make sure the time frame is right, right? Because I'm, I'm going back. But the story is what it is. So Biz goes to the studio. He come home. He said, look, him and have you on the beat. I'm like, yo, I'm supposed to do that record, man. I've been talking to anybody. I don't want to do that. Okay, you gonna go to the studio with me? So look, he let me hear the beat. I'm gonna sit this out to my man Cool B. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, because me and Heavy was good like that. You know what I mean? And I told him, so great record, but I didn't have nothing to do with that putting that together. So I had nothing to do with the in control. No. Okay. But that was my my workings. <laughs> gotcha. You, you were involved, but you weren't involved. I was involved, but I wasn't involved. You had heavy influence on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 89, Cool G Rap, Road to the Riches. No. I didn't have nothing. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened? Now, I didn't have anything to do with that record. But that was when we were recording our album this is the, how the correlation go so now when we were recording going off polo had the beat for the vapors for g rap g didn't want that beat mm. so we traded g some drums and some other stuff right so we gave it to him but g didn't use it for road to the riches but that record vapors beat was actually supposed to be for road for the road to the riches but g didn't want to rhyme to it so we used it for vapors wow. so now when we use that beat for vapors uh, they take um, now. Large Professor didn't know that we had the beat or whatever. So now we had the. It was the soundtrack for um, Colors. Okay. Soundtrack for Colors. G uses the kick and the snares for Butcher Shop. So you know, like the the record we traded him. So like you know, what I'm saying like that's the record he did with it. But they actually used the loop of it on uh, Streets of New York. The stuff that we traded him, like, you know, he used it again, but Large Professor produced that record. We didn't produce that record. But the, that's how our albums are mixed. And the only record that I ever did for G-Rap personally in the studio with him was Erase Racism. And there's a great story behind that, and we'll get to that momentarily. Yeah. Uh, Big Daddy Kane, it's a Big Daddy thing. 
Oh man, I had <laughs> me and Kay was together all the time. So like I said, we would trade things and I would give him things. So it was never uh uh I didn't never get production credit and I and I'm not arguing about that production credit because that's my brother and we traded things. Like Kane traded me the lyrics to uh things get a little easier for biz for warm it up Kane. Wow. So I gave him that and I took that because I couldn't finish Biz's album. The second album, I had to finish it because, you know, we were, we wanted to make that album dope. So I, would, I didn't want Biz going off the head every record. That wasn't, you know, and, you know, Biz and Kane weren't, uh, you know, getting together like they used to, to write. So I said, Kane, I need some words, man. I got a beat for you, though. Kane didn't even remember he gave me the words. All he remembered me laughing about the beat that I gave him. <laughs> And I said, yo, I got something for you. I know you're going to tear it up. And I gave it to him. He said, yo. And next time you heard that mother, it was going, yo, come get some. Some, you something. little bum. I'll take the cake, but you can't get the crumb. I said, gone, gone, gone. And on that album, uh, what else did I give him? I gave him a theme record or something on there. But, uh, you know, whatever Kane needed from me, I gave it. You know, and that's not me trying to get extra production or what I be talking about online when I didn't get credit for things or I didn't get paid for. Right. That's not that situation. That's my brother. That's my crew. We trade in for trading. Right. Kane has given me a whole rhyme for one line before. So <laughs> wow. That that's his mastery. He's master lyricist, wordsmith, whatever you want to call him, master it. Right. Very dope. Uh, going in 89, it's time for the sophomore album. The Biz Never Sleeps. What was the uh, game plan going into album number two? We wasn't going to fail. We couldn't. We couldn't because they would laugh at us because we wasn't using Molly as our producer. So we went and did it ourselves. And, um, you know, Cold Chilling wasn't feeling that. But we were actually paying for the studio time ourselves, everything to record that album. And we actually ran out of money. I had to borrow some money from my man to even go to the studio and record. So we wasn't going to fail on that. We had, to, we, we had a point to prove, and we proved it because we said if we make a little bit of records that we love for everybody around the world, we're going to be all right. And boy, did you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. were the sessions like for that particular album? Well, the sessions were always crazy because, well, I'm in three different studios for that album. You know, four, if you include Marley's house for the short stay that I went there because I was going to mix the album with him because we had done the album already. So I was going to mix the album with him. That's what leads to another story. But Biz didn't want me to do that. He said, yo, you just mix it. I said, yo, I ain't got no beef with Marley. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, come on. We did the album. It's done. Right. You know, he can't get production credit on this one. You know what I'm saying? Because the first album looks like Kane and Molly went in the studio and made an album for me and Biz. That's what it looks like if you read the back credits. Ah. Uh, and that's not what happened. Now, did they do heavy work in there? Yes, they did. But we did work too. And we had, like Biz, I can't even front. Biz got a lot of those beats that he wanted to use because he wanted to use them. And things, ideas and stuff to put with it, I put with it. So... You know, we didn't get that credit on the first album, but we said we're going to get our credit on the second album because that's where the music business is about, credits. Right. So when we did that album, so Biz, being that it's Biz, and we going to do the deal or whatever, and Biz got the money. So I took the co-production seat. Biz took the production seat. Cool. Whether I produced it or not, he's the producer. I'm the co-producer. You know what I mean? Right. I'm there in the studio every day with that album. That's the deal we made. You know what I mean? So we didn't make that kind of deal with Molly. So that, and, and we would have, but he didn't never, we never got credit for the stuff we did. Right. So on this, we getting our own credit. So something happens and, you know, but the sessions were, because I, I was about to ramble. <laughs> hey, we love to ramble. <laughs> Do your thing. The sessions were crazy. I started the album at Databank Studios. I did most of the work at Calliope Studios. I tried to mix at Molly's Crib. That didn't work out. So then I ended up at Paul C at 1212. And thus, 
you see this. You know what I'm saying? Right. And Paul C., when I met Paul C., I knew that we had got to the mountaintop. We, I said, this is what is going to happen from here. If Paul C. lives, which he's living through all of us, because it's a whole bunch of people he influenced, but the short time that I knew him, the impact that he made and showed me what he knew, that's what made us go into a different zone. Thus, you know, even after he got killed, we got a production deal. We got the groups and we did everything. And I ended up doing everything else at Power Play with Doc. I finished the, the Biz Never Sleeps album off at Power Play. So I went from Data Bank to Calliope, uh, stopped at Marlon's house for not even a, a short period of time, and 12-12 to Power Play. And all the sessions were crazy. It was, it was a creative, because we used to have nice and smooth in the studio some nights, you know, uh, different people would come through the studios because we'd be doing 12 at night sessions to eight in the morning at Calliope. So those sessions were crazy because, you know, people come out of the club, yo, what y'all doing? Biz would stop by after he come out of the club because I'm in the studio every night. Right. Yeah. So what was the story behind Just a Friend and Paul C? How does that uh, correlate? Paul C had nothing to do with Just a Friend. Did he, uh, Did I mean, did you record it over at his studio? Nope, okay. Recorded just a friend at Calliope Studios. Okay. What Paul C did, we was gonna mix that with him. The okay. The only records I recorded with Paul C was Me Versus Me and A Thing Named Kim. And from there, like we knew like yell, cause he could interpret that 1200 in ways that I, did, I wasn't aware of that it did things like that. I knew what I could chop up and do, but he worked the machine without hitting the buttons. And then I said, ooh, 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 okay. And if you told him to do something, he could do exactly what you told him. So he gave, he did a drum roll for me on that album. He did Kim on that album. He And he did Me Versus Me with me on that album. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? And that's the only things that, that I laid at 1212. Now, what I laid with Doc was um, Killer Force. So that's actually the final record. And I did the Michael Jackson over at Power Play. The last one. The one that I, I, I look, I handed the Molly. He think it's the first mix. He puts it out on Hot Chillin' and still don't give me no credit. Like like the record says, <laughs> produced by Molly Moss. It says a Bismarcky record produced by Molly. But don't say Cool V, know it. Wow. Then he put my Marvin Gaye mix on there. So Marvin <laughs> Gaye mix was a mix that I did at his house to give him for the radio because it was Marvin Gaye's birthday. Like, I'm an Aries, so it's Aries season right now. I right. did a Marvin Gaye remix, and I gave it to Molly to play on the radio because it was Marvin Gaye's birthday back way back. I, he gets the stuff off the tape, put it on the other side of the record. I still don't get no credit. <laughs> was this typical Marley? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> this is about the third or fourth story, so it seems we're going in that direction. <laughs> I'm not here to bash Molly. I'm here to tell right, you right, the right. Truth. I'm right. here to tell you the truth. No, third, fourth story from somebody else. And this I, is I'm the first. You, this is one of I'm the stories. You, what I'm telling you, right? Can't nobody tell you different. Right. I've got some Joe Fatal stories in there that you know. Uh, yeah. So making just a friend. Uh, did you know that song was going to take off? Yes. I didn't know in the beginning, but I knew when I saw Biz, like, he really wanted, he told me before we made Make the Music, the drums that we used from there, he said, when I find those drums, we go in platinum. He said that before we ever made Make the Music. That's why I said we had ideas that we were, you know, uh, thinking about doing, and that was one of his ideas, but it was never for just a friend. But he had got this record from my man, Danny Dan, the, the original Freddie Scott record, and when we put those records together, I, you know, because that was like Biz wanted to sing. So we couldn't loop that record. He wanted to sing the record or whatever the case may be. He loved that record. And I said, listen, I got my man to play the, the keyboards. I got, uh, I said, yo, why don't we just put the drums to the keyboards and play it? We don't have to use the record. And we did it. And that's the first night Biz stayed in the studio all night with me. First night. 
And he stayed in actually a half hour longer than me. And when he got in the booth and was singing it the next day when we went back to do it, and he was balling his fists up in the booth and he was going, yo, <laughs> you. I knew, we, I knew it was going to be something. Right. I didn't know it was going to go all the platinums that it went, but I knew it was going to be something. You know, we got the platinum on the wall to prove it. It, 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 it just was a, a feel record. It was a feeling. And he felt it. And no matter what nobody say, we believed in it. Because everybody called me crazy when I said, I'm putting that out first. We put that out first. The record label did not want to put that record out first. Wow. After the success of that particular single, how did life change for Cool V? What, that single? Yeah, did that life, uh, did, did that success of that change uh, anything about, um, you know, your career? I got some more chains. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, man. Anybody that know anybody that know me know I'm still rolling like I was in '88. I'm not that I'm in a time zone or a time warp, but I've never been the flashy guy. You know what I'm saying? I get right. a car, get some chains, and you know, keep it moving. Some quick, right. you know. That's no it. doubt. 1990 comes around. Master Ace drops his debut album, Take a Look Around. Are you a part of that project? Not at all. Cool G. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no. But I'm saying Ace album was dope. And Ace is my man. And 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 we, we wanted to be a part of that album. It just couldn't happen because Ace was locked in with Molly. We wanted to do the record with us. But Ace, you know, Molly didn't, he, for whatever reason, you know, because Ace was my dude. He used to come hang out with me in Jersey. Ace live in Jersey now. You know what I'm saying? So, right. <laughs> look, Ace used to come hang out with me. Ace, Craig G, come, every, everybody in Juice Crew hung at my crib. So, like, boom. You know, Ace, we, we should have been a part of that album. So are you saying by the time you guys recorded your second album, Marley is off to the side? You're not dealing with Marley anymore? After that situation happened at his house that's in my book and DJ Cool V never sleeps? Right. We never went, I've never been to Molly's house ever again. Gotcha. I've, matter of fact, no, no, don't let me lie, because I went to his house in Queens when we got back together and we was talking. That's when I gave him the Michael Jackson record. He said, yo, V, let's put that out on a limited edition. Boom, boom, boom. He think it's the one we did already. That was the second one. So that's not even the one I did at his house. He still put produced by Molly. <laughs> I didn't Here's at his house. Right. He wasn't even there when I did that. He wasn't there when I did the first one. Andre Booth was there. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> cool G Rap, when it dead or alive? That's Erase Racism. I did the Erase yeah. Racism on that album. Yeah. Tell me tell me about that creative process of having Kane and Biz on uh, Erase Racism. That was the record that I wanted to make a difference because G has some funky shit on there already. So I figured, you know, he said, yo, I want to do a record called Erase Racism. I got the beat for it. I got you, baby. So he don't know what beat we're using. G didn't even show up to the studio till we already in there working. I, I reworked the beat because I had done this beat for my man Unique from Jersey. Right. And I was, it was going on my compilation album. But when we did the compilation album, Unique had got locked up. And all the rest of the groups got signed. So I took the uh, the beat that I had for Unique, reworked it, and put the other drums with it, did some other moves, put the drum rolls, and I did that at Power Play. So we in the studio already writing, because it's about racism. So Kane in there writing his verse. Biz over there got his notepad. He writing his verse. You know what I'm saying? So G shows up. So G was like, I said, yo, G, we ready for you, baby. The beat's ready. You can go in the booth. He said, Nah, I ain't going to the booth. Y'all motherfuckers right. I said, yo, you told me you had your rhymes already. He said, yeah, I did. But I'm, I'm going to go roast me on my own record. So <laughs> he sat down and wrote some more rhymes. And when G wrote the rhymes, you see what he wrote. That was right. He wrote that right then, came in there. I'm going to the ball so I'm going to the ball for Listen, he killed that. So now, Kane. Uh, it's still writing. So I said, Biz, go, you know, so we was going to use Biz on the hook anyway, but Biz was going to get a rhyme. I thought, you know, Biz was going to go second and Kane was going to go last because G set it off because it's his record. So Biz 
is writing the whole time. Like we in there for about two hours. So Ben's writing. So he goes in the booth and go, the <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> so now look, I said, yo. <laughs> he said, no, I got it. So I, I bring back the tape and go back. He go, boy, it, 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 right? So now I let him go all the way through with it. Together we learn how to. I said, yo, you wrote that? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you was writing? <laughs> yeah. So I the paper, and all he had was the ink is the, the, the ink is black, the page is white. Together, and you know, that's a song already. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you really been writing that that long? So, K, yo, we in the studio, we laughing. G said, "Yo, this crazy hell." So we we like, yo, we laugh, we having fun, and then Kane goes in there and tear it up, and I let Biz go in, and, and yo, the rest is history, man, and and and. The record is still relevant right now. So a Absolutely. lot of people just hear it. They're saying, yo, I never heard this record before. Absolutely.